All right, time for the word of God, right? <laughs> Don't laugh at my message, okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for this time this morning, even as I preach your word. I pray for your anointing. I pray that you anoint my vocal cords. I pray for revelation and knowledge to be in the midst. Open up our hearts and that we we'll receive your word like a seed planted. And it will grow and grow and grow. And we will see the manifestation. Satan, I ask you to lay your hands from every ship here, for every person here, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Satan, I rebuke you, command you to leave this place right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 As I was worshipping there, suddenly I have this, uh, uh, I think the Holy Spirit reminded me of the parable where Jesus say he's a shepherd. And where there's a uh, hundred sheep, and if one sheep went, on, went missing, he will go all out. To search for the one ship. He will leave behind the 99. All right? And he will go all out to search for the one ship. So what happened to the 99? If out of the 99, another one is lost, then what happened? He will also go on and search. He will leave the 98 behind and go on and search for the other ship. So if another three ship went missing out of the 98... What do you think he would do? He would go all out and search the three sheep. So how many sheep left behind? Hey. Yeah, God, like, come on. <laughs> 95, all right. Your mind's not working. But the point is this. He will go all out to search for the sheep. No. Now, the question is, if one of your friends backslided, went missing, stopped coming to church, and you know about it, what would you do? Will you go all out to reach out to him? Will you? You don't have to raise up your hands, all right? You know yourself. You know yourself, all right? Go all out to reach out to him. Bring him back to the fold. Bring him back to Jesus. Bring him back to the church, if that's the best. You know, we are living in the end of the end times where Satan is going all out to disrupt the church. All out, you know. All out. During the COVID-19 pandemic, he thought he has disrupted the church because people stopped, stopped coming to church on a Sunday to worship. People cannot meet each other. All right? But the Lord has other plans because the Holy Spirit is also working. It's also working and bringing more and more people to come to the kingdom of God. Now, I want to share one verse in uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed, if you have your Bible, turn with me to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Now, it's not on the screen. Not that I do it on purpose. But I felt I need to share this verse. Someone can read it? Brother Abraham, would you like to read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3? I see you have a huge Bible. And okay, can someone else read another one? King James Version. Anyone have a KJV? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, the King James Version says, Amen. Now, where is Jesus now? Can anybody tell me? Is Jesus here on earth? You see? Jesus is right now seated at the right hand in the throne of heaven. Right? And Jesus is not here on earth. If Jesus is here on earth, then there is no second coming of Jesus Christ. Then he wouldn't have to come again, right? 
And then Jesus wouldn't have to say, look, I need to go to the Father, which is in heaven. And when I go, I will send the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Advocate to come to you. So Jesus, in a literal form, he is in heaven, seated at the right hand of God. All right? In other words, he is full power, full authority in heaven and on earth and under earth. All universe. He has the full power. And in the book of Acts chapter 1, when they were, the disciples were with him, and they saw him being lifted up and went up to the sky. And from the sky, he went missing. And then the angel came and saw him, saw them, or saw all of them and told them, look, why still look up in the sky? You know why? Because they were still looking up in the sky. They were just searching, you know? Sometimes when, uh, you know, in the place where I, I live, at the mines there, in the night there's always aeroplanes flying. And sometimes the plane is so far in the distance, it looks like a, 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 like a star in the night. But then it starts moving. At one time I thought it's a moving star, you know, and then suddenly, yeah, yeah it's an aeroplane. <laughs> you know, you see? So they were looking up in the sky and saw Jesus. Lift her up. And he went up to heaven. So Jesus is not on earth. But you have the Holy Spirit in you when you are born again. And because of that, when you are born again, you are being made righteous. All right? You are the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Amen? Everyone say, I am the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Because you have been made righteous, the Bible says the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. So your prayer is actually powerful and effective. Then some of you may say, hey brother, Robert, hey, you know in the book of Daniel, when Daniel was uh, praying and, and his prayer was being uh, uh, delayed for 21 days. By satanic forces, Satan was there. And Gabriel was, was, and Gabriel appeared to Daniel, then told Daniel, look, your prayer we have already heard. But, you know, I couldn't do anything. I need to call back up. I need to call Michael, the angel, to come and fight with me. Now, that was in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, it's different. Because Daniel doesn't have the Holy Spirit to live in him. All right. He's not born again. All the people in the Old Testament, they are not born again. The Holy Spirit come upon them and they live. Just like King David. The Holy Spirit came upon him when he had a child with Bathsheba. The Holy Spirit came upon him and the Holy Spirit left. That's why David prayed, pray, create in me a clean heart. Creating me a clean heart. Let not your Holy Spirit depart from me. Creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. That was the prayer of David in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, because of Jesus, that's why when you take the Holy Communion, you remember him. You remember him for what he has done on the cross 2,000 years ago. He died for you. He was crucified because of you and me. Independent of whether you believe him or not, you, we, we, are not we haven't been exist, we, we are not even born yet. But 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on the cross because he had a plan together with Father God. For God so loved you and me that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus. That whomsoever believe in him, whomsoever, whatever race you are, whatever gender you are, I don't care, all right? Whomsoever believe in him will not die but have eternal life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to God the Father except through me. No other religion, no other belief, no other doctrine, no other opinions 
No other philosophies. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And because He loves us, that's why grace is in operation in our life. Grace is the abounding provision of God in action. All because of the unwavering love of God for us. And God loves you and me. Never, ever, ever forget that. No hikes, no depths, no angels, no demons, no any powers on earth will separate you from the love of God. Amen. All right? Everyone say amen. amen. All right? Nobody. All right? Jesus has done it on the cross for you. And there is a purpose when he done it on the cross for you. He has taken all your sins, all condemnation, all sicknesses, all poverty. And he has delivered you from death and hell. Independent of whether you believe it or not. You didn't do anything to... to, to you didn't do anything... To allow us, allow yourself, so that you will have the credential for it. You did nothing. You and I, we did nothing, right? We were not even born yet, but it's there for you. That is the love of God for you and me. And blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings. The spiritual blessings of God has been done on the cross 2,000 years ago. We don't deserve it. We've done nothing to deserve it. We didn't do anything. We don't even know anything about it. But Jesus died on the cross for you and me. And that message has been preached 2,000 years ago until now. And it's kept on preaching and preaching and preaching. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is now on earth. And his job is to convict people of sin. And what kind of sin? Sin of unbelief. That's all. That's all in the book of John. The sin. The sin of unbelief. That's all. Nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. The sin of unbelief. The day when you, you know that you have this sin of unbelief and you have changed it and give your heart to Jesus and when you start believing, the grace of God appears in you and start working in your life. There is this power. The power of his resurrection start working in your life and he will turn things around for you. You turn darkness into light. He will turn trouble into joy. He will turn sickness into healing. All right. But you have to go and assess and get it. All right. The children of Israel, when the Israelites, when they got out of Egypt, the promised land is there already. It's there. It's like the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ is there. But they have to go and possess it. And you and I, we have to go and possess your inheritance, possess your, 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 your abundance, favor. By believing in Jesus Christ. Not by performance, all right? When you go and possess, you don't have to go and, and, and strive for it. It's there. All you need to do is Believe. Believe, right? But you and I, we have an enemy. Satan, yeah. As a tan. <laughs> right? Yeah. All right. Sorry, uh, those of you got surname tan. Uh. <laughs> Not referring to yourself, all right? Yeah. Satan. All right? Now let's go to James 4, verse 7. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. 
Now, God is not going to resist for you, the devil, you know. He's not going to resist for you. The devil is there. He's a defeated foe. Jesus has defeated him on the cross. He took the, he took the keys of, of hell and death from him. Stripped him from all his power. But because God is a just God, you know, sometimes I would think to myself, you know, come on, Lord, why don't you just get rid of Satan just like, uh, like an ant, you know, just, you know, solve the problem, right? Right? Yeah, you know, and when I, <laughs> maybe not hard enough, right? <laughs> but God is a just God. And he deals with his creation in a just way. Even Satan, he has, deal, he has to deal with Satan in a just way. Do you know that? In a just way. Because he's a just God. And when Adam fell, all power that Adam has, the dominion over the earth, he has passed it to Satan. He has passed it to Satan. That's why Satan has dominion over the earth today. He's a small G God. He's not a big G God, all right? Small G God. Right? And, but God, through Jesus Christ, he, on the cross 2,000 years ago, he has given us the authority and the power to fight against him and to resist him. We are the one that has power. Do you know that? Satan don't have any power. He's a deceiver. He deceives you as though he has all the power, but he doesn't have. Because Jesus already stripped him from the power. You know, several months ago, I shared this, I shared it again, all right? You know, you know off and on, I have this uh, spiritual attack. In those days, the spiritual attack I always get frightened and fearful, you know. But over time, the fear has been uh, gone. All right? The fear has been gone. Why? Because as you know who you are in the Lord, as you know that you have the authority over all powers of the dark side, when you know who you are in the Lord, fear will go away. And Satan wants to attack your image. Satan wants to attack your identity. The day when Jesus was baptized in the river of Jordan, when he was brought up to the wilderness by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Satan came and tempted him. Tempt him means come and attack him, tempt him, oppress him, do everything to defeat him. Satan didn't come and fight with him with power, did he? He didn't. If Satan is so powerful, then he will clash with Jesus with power and power. Like some Marvel movies, you know? The Avengers. The opponent, the enemy come. Bam, 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 fight here, fight there. You know? No. Satan came and attacked his identity. If thou, if you are the son of God... If you are really the son of God. You see, he wants to attack his, his identity, who he is. And Jesus never gave in to him. Because Jesus knew, knew himself that he is the beloved son of God. Because when he was baptized in the river of Jordan, the white cloud came and a voice came. Father said to him, this is my beloved son whom I am pleased. John the Baptist heard it and a lot of people heard it too. A voice, an audible voice. When Jesus was in the wilderness, he was tempted. He was under attack from devil. Attack his identity. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. Jesus don't need to give in to Satan, right? So submit yourself, therefore, to God. We submit ourselves to God. God is our, our creator. God is our Lord. God is, God is our God. And then resist the devil. Everyone say, I resist the devil. 
When you resist the devil, means you fight against him. Get lost. All right? If you don't know what word to use, get lost. No need to be so flowery. You know, all right? Have some anger in you. I know we are all kind people, you know, we don't like to shout. But when you come against your enemy, you have to have this anger, the holy anger. You know, just like Jesus when he went to the temple. He was so upset because the house of the Lord should be a house of prayer. And they were, they were selling things there and they were trading. You know, trading, selling things like in some shopping mall. You know, Pasar Malama. What? Kota Raya. You know, you know, or some uh, Masjid India there, you know, I don't know where, 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 you know, you know, trading. No, oh, sorry, yeah. What I'm trying to say is Jesus was upset. He overturned all the tables because it's a house of God, a temple. The thing is this, resist the devil. So that day when I got home, I was very frustrated because things are not going my way. And it's been a while. And I got to my room and I shouted aloud. Satan, you want to fight? Come and fight! I thought he never hear me. He heard me. Because that very night around 2.30 or 3 a.m., now, that night, I couldn't sleep in my, 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 my room, the master bedroom. So I went to the next door room. And I had this sudden oppression, uh, sudden oppression. Uh, this demonic, demonic guy, all right? I was lying down, and then he was holding my hand here. And I look in his face. The shape of his face is a bit like a, like a rugby ball, you know, a little bit like a, the kind of shape. Dark gray and so on. I tried to look at his eyes. He did not look at me. He was like, you know. And only I shouted one word. Loser! There was anger in me the whole day, you know, because I knew it was, it was a demonic, satanic attack on a lot of things that I do. And immediately, I don't even have time to say in the name of Jesus, because it's all happening in a couple of seconds. And he has wings, I, I still can remember vividly, like now he has wings, and then he just flew away. All right, it took me a while to uh, understand and to uh, recall, I was just, you know, of course I owned the light, like, you know, and see where he goes. <laughs> but my point is this, you need to fight back against satanic forces, all right? I'm not asking you to be uh, demon conscious, all right? I'm not asking you to be satanic conscious. You know, when I was... Uh, when I was in my young adults, I was with this group of people, you know, they always go for deliverance, you know, pray for people, deliverance. Everything they see is, is demonic, you know, everything. A painting there, a picture there, you know, oh, this one, oh, that one must, must burn, must clear. Yeah. Yeah, I was brought up in those kind of situations. But over time, I find it quite absurd, you know, really absurd, you know, because... The devil can't be like living in that painting, right? You know, he got more things to do, isn't it? <laughs> you know, if there are a thousand paintings, you know, one thousand of them must be living in the painting. <laughs> it's quite absurd, isn't it? His job is to go and, and create havoc. If he's living in the painting, how can he create havoc? You know, it doesn't make sense at all over time. So we don't have to be. Demonic conscious everything everywhere you go, all right? You be righteousness conscious. He will flee from you. But if you, the Holy Spirit tells you this is not an ordinary thing. This is something demonic. You can see something not right, all right? There is a series of events which is not right. It is not normal. And, and the Holy Spirit 
uh, you know, speaks to you and say, look, this is a demonic attack on your family, demonic attack on your, on your business, demonic attack on your children, demonic attack on, on certain things, you know. Resist the devil. Fight against him, all right? You have the authority. Later we go to the Bible verse where it shows you that you have the authority, all right? The devil wants to attack your identity. You are sons and daughters of God. Amen? Everyone say, I am the child of God. I have the authority. He who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. You see, now, the mystery of all ages Christ is in you. When I say Christ is in you, Christ is the anointed one. The anointing of Jesus Christ is in you through the Holy Spirit. All right? That's why the Bible, Paul will say, through Christ is in you. All right? I'm not asking you to be Jesus. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. But because of the Holy Spirit, you are born again. And the Holy Spirit lives in you. Amen? He lives in you. So when you pray, God hears your prayer. Your prayer immediately. Right? Immediately. And God wants you to do things that you have. You have the ability, just that you don't know about it. Imagine you have a, a machine gun, you know? Very powerful machine gun. And the devil saw you having the machine gun. Instead of taking the machine gun and resist him and shoot him, the devil see you run away. The devil knows you don't know how to use the machine gun because you're running away. And when the devil comes closer to you, you run away some more. Instead of using your machine gun to shoot at him, he sees you run away. That's what, he's, that's what the devil and all the demonic forces are seeing the church. They're seeing the church, the people running away. Instead of resisting him and fighting against him. Hello? Don't run away. He runs away, not you run away. Resist the devil and you run away. No. Resist the devil and I will flee from him. <laughs> He will flee from you. He will run away. What? Ah, why are you takut? Because you don't know you have this machine gun. You don't know how to use. Ah. Ah. You know, ba -ba 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 -ba. Ah. I thought ladies, you not takut. Ah. Ah. Uh, when your husband talks something against you, you talk about it. Maybe you take a thing and throw at him. Uh. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, your husband is not good. That's why you're not that good. <laughs> you see, we have been brought up in our culture, you know. You all the horror movies and so on. You know, sometimes I, was, I used to wonder how come, how come when Jesus... When uh, in his ministries, a lot of healing happened just like that. You, know? you must understand, the Jews, they have been in the word of God for a long time. The day they are born, seventh day they are all circumcised. Today. They know about Jehovah God. They have, they have scriptures with them from the Old Testament. Just that when Jesus comes, when Jesus was preaching about the kingdom of God. That's why he said repent for the kingdom of God is, is near. When he said repent means it's a shift of mind. Metanoia. Metanoia means a shift of mind or how you think. They were thinking according to the Old Testament where, where they will follow all the law of Moses and all the laws of the prophets, the instruction of the prophets. But Jesus said, I came not to abolish the law and the prophets. I came to fulfill it. Not abolish it. Why he has to fulfill it? Because you and I cannot fulfill it. 
If you and I can fulfill it, he don't have to fulfill it. You understand? So, those people, when Jesus was praying for them, they actually have the understanding and have the belief in Jehovah God, in Elohim, in Adonai. They already have the belief. Just that when Jesus comes, Jesus now is preaching a new dimension of the kingdom of God. That's why their faith suddenly being released and they believe in Jesus and miracles happen. Right? That is why the Gentiles or the Greek, the centurion and the other lady, they are not Jews. They are the Gentiles. And when they believe in the work of Jesus Christ, Jesus said, I've never seen such a man of great faith. Resist the devil. All right? How do you resist the devil? Shout, Satan, get lost in the name of Jesus. Short prayer. Huh? Who? Who? Speaks French. You just say, "Get lost in the name of Jesus." He will flee. All right. Don't don't try and uh, don't try and make it so complex. Don't go and, dear Satan, please, can you please move the other side? All right. Don't be too kind. All right. Dear Satan, I don't know whether you understand my my my, my language or not. Get lost in the name of Jesus. <laughs> All right? Because the Holy Spirit is the one that gives you the power. It's not your own power. All right? Let's go to the next verse. Luke 4. Now, why I say Adam has given him the power. And the devil said unto him, with Jesus, All this power will I give you. And the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me. Now, stop for a while. For that is delivered unto me. Now, Luke 4. Let's, let's look at verse 5 first, all right? Verse 5. And the devil, taking up high in a mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. That is verse 5. Verse 6. This is where the devil said to him, For that is delivered unto me. And the person that gave up the power of dominion over the earth is Adam. And he was given to Satan. And now Satan said, to whomsoever I will give. All right? And he's a deceiver. He wants to deceive Jesus, to worship him, to give him, submit to him. And what did Jesus say? And verse 7 this is Satan again. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be yours. Now this is attacking his identity, all right? Jesus is the son of God. He don't need all this kingdom of the earth. He was there in the beginning was the word and the word was there. The word was, was God himself. Everything that was created was created through the word. Jesus is God himself in the beginning. He's 100% God and he's 100% human. When he was operating on earth, he was operating on a strength as a human being. Not any other ordinary human being because he was conceived of the Holy Spirit. Without sin, he knew no sin and he did not sin. Only his blood is able to buy us out from this curse of death and hell and next verse and jesus answered and said to him get thee behind me it means get lost all right simple english of course you want to tell satan don't have to be so flowery like satan get thee you know you know get lost get lost don't understand so Hokkien, how to say? Get lost. In Hokkien, anybody? Chao Kui. Chao Kui? Oh, Kan Kui. Chao Kui. 
Chao Kui. Hey, I never heard of this before. What Hokkien are you? Klang or Penang? Penang, uh, no wonder. Klang. Uh. Uh, Chao Kui. Chao Kui, all right? Kui. Uh. Oh. Myanmar, how to say? Myanmar, any Myanmar people? Get lost! How to say? Huh? Get lost, get thee behind me. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord your God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. Okay, why don't we, 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 we call a different, call a brother, come. How to speak in Tamil? Come. Get lost. Come on. We need to learn how to get lost, Satan. Come on. Loudly, how, how to Tamil. say in, in Tamil? Tamil is it Poo way, poo, poo, get lost, poo. Po. Uh. Hallelujah, poo. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh. You know, sometimes you have all these, uh, uh, you know, we come from different culture, right? right? Sometimes you have all this image of some, 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 some different gods here and there. So you have to, you know, speak their language. It's true, it's true, you know. It's, but the name of Jesus. Now, now, you must understand this, you know. When the devil sees you, uh, the devil is a spirit realm. He's a spirit realm. And when the devil sees you, guess what he sees? What he sees? He sees you in the spirit realm. He don't see you like a physical guy. Right? He, see, he can see something in you which is different from the rest of the people. Because you are sealed by the Holy Spirit. He can see the Holy Spirit living in you. Are you with me? So... If I ask you to put in you, yourself in the shoes of a devil, which you can't, <laughs> he sees you in the spirit realm. And one day, if God opened your eyes in the spirit realm, just for a mere seconds, yeah, you can see in the spirit realm. You, although you can see angels, you can see devil also. That's why God doesn't want you to see, open your eyes in the spirit realm. Because you'll be busy in the spirit realm. Oh, there were that angel here. You know, you know, how, how are you going to live your life? <laughs> how are you going to live your life? How are you going to talk to your boss? Or how are you going to talk to your wife? You see her suddenly, the devil behind her or something. You know, your life is going to be disrupted. There won't be abundant life for you. Yes. But we will know through the Holy Spirit. And he will tell you, he will tell you that things are not going right. And you got to resist the devil. Let's go to our next verse quickly. Finally, Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in yourself. Is it? Not be in yourself. In the Lord, you cannot be self-sufficient. The day you think you're self-sufficient, that is the day when you fall from grace. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. When you humble yourself, you cast all your cares to Him. You pass all your issue to Him. You pass all your problems to Him. You pass all your, your, your sickness or whatever you have been praying for to Him. For He cares for you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Not your might. Your might and my might is, is, is not good enough. Your mind and my mind will just be afraid, fearful. Uh, like our sister say, what? Takut. Ah. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against, against the wiles of the devil. What do you mean, wiles of the devil? Craftiness, deception. Now, 
He did say against the power of the devil. If I say the devil has no power, maybe some of you may be laughing at me. You know? Against the wiles of the devil, craftiness. Never in the Bible you can, you, can, you, can, you can see that against the power of the devil. That is so powerful, it's going to like wipe you off. He can't wipe you off. Against the deception, the wiles, the craftiness, the cunningness of the devil. He will try to fool you. Fool you. Deceive you. That you are nobody. That you should be condemned. God don't love you. You see, you see, all this thing happening to you. Why? God angry at you. Why? Because he never do this, do that. Because you are such a, a lousy fella. Attack your reputation. Make you feel complex, inferior. You got to resist him. Resist him. He attacks your mind. Now, one thing, this is a fact, all right? The devil attacks your mind. He plays around with your mind. He wants to control your mind. That's why in today's world, you see how social media is used to form opinions, philosophies of the world, doctrines of the world. False teaching. False teaching. Go back to the law of Moses. Go back to all this you must do. You must perform, all right? Your salvation is not, not, not secure yet. This is the biggest lie of the devil. You got to do all this, right? You must, you must attend all the church services. If you don't attend the church services, you, you're, you're not secure yet. Not only this church, you must attend all the other churches as well. You must pray all day. I'm not against praying, huh? Don't get me wrong, all right? It makes you feel condemned, all right? Now, do you know that a lot of my time in prayer, yeah, it's not merely in one place just praying non-stop, you know. You look at the life of Jesus. His life is on the go, right? Some nights he goes to the mountain when he needs to make an important decision the next day. Because the Bible says, Jesus say, what I do, what I say to you, I hear it from my father. What my father tells me, I tell you. All right? And most of the time in the mountain when he's all by himself, that's where he has fellowship and he hears from the father. What to do and what not to do. For example, when he was, uh, if you read in the Bible, when he was to choose his 12 disciples, the night before he chose the, the 12 disciples in the morning, the night before that, he was praying in the mountain because it's a big decision to choose the 12 disciples especially he got to choose one of them who is going to betray him now 70 80 percent of my time in prayer are not sitting in one place you know. i could be in a car i could be just sitting down in the sofa i could just be reading the word of god I could just be like uh, browsing, you know, my phone and I'm just looking at some Bible verses and try to meditate on it. I could just be uh, having thoughts of the Word of God, you know. And that is part of a spiritual life. Your walk with God. Because why? Because Holy Spirit is in you. All right? Holy Spirit is in you. Of course, if you have the luxury to, to be in one place and, and spend the, the, the minutes or the hours there, it's, it's better, you know. Now, we are on the go. When we are on the go, you can pray without ceasing, right? There are times when you don't know what to pray, you just speak in tongues. Just speak in tongues. A few minutes while waiting, while thinking. Immerse yourself. Immerse yourself. All right? Be conscious. Walk by faith and not by your sight. Not by what you see, what you hear, or, 
or how you feel. I know people like to feel. You know. We are creatures of feeling, emotions. We believe what we see. When somebody gives you a bad news, or a doctor gives you a bad news, or, your, or somebody tells, uh, gives you a bad report, no. I'm not denying. I'm not denying the natural world. I'm not denying the physical world. But I'm denying that is not merely a physical world or natural world. There is also another world which is a spiritual world. The Bible says the world was created, was formed from the unseen to the seen. From the unseen, all right? When the world was formed, the, before the physical world was formed, there was this unseen world. You can't see it, but it was formed through that. And even right now when we're sitting here, there are a lot of things you cannot see. For example, if you have your, your, your phone or you're watching a live telecast match in your home, not, not asking you on your phone now and watch. Uh. When you're watching a, a game, a football game, or whatever game, Olympics, when you're watching, there are sickness, there are frequency within our a surrounding. And when you watch a game, let's say in the English Premier League, you know, a game happening in London, doesn't mean you, you switch on your TV and the signal from there travel here. No, the signal is already here. It's just that it's being activated. The signal didn't travel all the way from London. <laughs> Alright? If it travel from London until here, it won't be live telecast. Really. The signal is already here. Scientists found out in the unseen world, there are frequency, radio frequency everywhere. They can't see it, but they can see the result of it. When Alexander Graham Bell, when he created the first phone, all right, the first telephone, he understood there is a radio frequency. They can see the radio frequency. But they can see the result of the radio frequency from one end to the other end. They can hear the voice from one end to the other end when the, when the call has been made. We take it for granted. We are living in an unseen world, spiritual world. You cannot see, right? But it is there. All right? It is there. It is the truth. Likewise, demonic forces are there. It just didn't happen. Wars didn't just happen like that because there are demonic forces prompting the people of the world and the leadership of the world to fight against one another. The Bible says principalities of dark forces, wickedness. Now quickly, next verse. Mark eleven twenty. In the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Now this is what happened when Jesus cursed the fig tree. A fig tree is just a tree with some small fruits. And then Peter calling to remembrance, suddenly Peter recalls, say unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you have cursed is withered away. Now why did the Bible use the word curse? It's because it's really cursing. Jesus is speaking loudly. All right? Jesus didn't speak softly. There are times Jesus was always loved, very gentle, he speaks softly. And there are times when he needs to speak loudly and all his disciples heard it. If you read carefully, all his disciples heard it. You got to speak loudly. Don't be too, too tame or too shy. <clears throat> I remember when... Uh, we were praying together with Pastor Jack, you know. We were cursing the cancer cell. I know you don't like the word curse, all right? Because the world has so many curses here and there. 
But there are times when you need to curse, a holy curse, in the name of Jesus. Because you're fighting against the devil. The devil. The devil. You know, there was a time in uh, you know, this ministry I found a Christian team in Malaysia. Uh, several years ago. This guy has been attacking me online, you know. Accusing me of uh, putting up images, which is uh, uh, so-called his image. You know, you know some of those pictures. You know, he claimed to be his. You know, I didn't know it's a con job. He's been attacking me, and he wants me to pay for for some of the images. But these images, I checked with my editor, is it's it's free online, and there are some images we have uh, we bought it also. Uh, it's like a, a picture stocks, you know. You can, you can pay a certain amount of money, then you have uh, a lot of all these uh, pictures or images where you can, uh, you can, you can access, all right? However, this guy online keep on attacking and attacking and attacking, nonstop, you know, through emails and here, my phone, and, and, as, and, and because it's a Christian ministry, I, you know, I, f- I felt a little bit like, uh, you know, I want to do the right thing because he uses words like, you know, you Christians, uh, you always want to get things and don't want to pay, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, it makes, makes you feel very condemned. And as time goes by, it's like days and days and days and weeks, you know. Every time I will receive an email, he will like go, they're like, this guy is like a hater, you know, hater. He hates. Maybe he hates the Christian group, you know, just want to persecute. A Christian ministry. He just want to he shoot you down. And one fine day, I couldn't take it anymore. I was driving and I didn't take it anymore. I shouted, Satan, you lay your hands from, from this, this website. You, in the name of Jesus, you get lost. You know, I was screaming and shouting. Next day, no more. Immediately. The following day, zero email and zero attack. And I was wondering to myself, why did I need to suffer for so long? <laughs> if only I, I knew it the next day, I, you know, I resist the devil and he will flee from me. And that's what most, most of us do. Most Christians, we take such a long time. You know, we can cut short our suffering and our persecution. We can cut short of all this by resisting the devil. Next verse. And Jesus said unto them, have faith in God. Now, Jesus didn't just say like, you know, hey guys, you know, have faith, la, have faith in God. You know. I don't think he so nicely said to them. He probably said, you guys, come on, man, you have seen me doing miracles. Have faith in God. Verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he say. Now most of us want to say, we don't say to our mountain, you know. We like to talk about our mountain. Oh God. You talk to God about mountain. God, you know, I have this problem, Lord. You know, can you help me? Help me. We like to talk to God about mountain. The right thing to do is talk to your mountain about God. All right? Don't talk to God about your mountain. Grow up. Talk to your mountain. Be thou removed. Get lost. Sickness, I curse you. Get lost. Have this habit of using the word of God and knowing who you are. Nowadays, every time I have a pain here on my head or whatever, you know, then the first thing I do is get lost, pain, headache, be gone. Say to your mountain, get lost. Be thou removed. Be thou uprooted. Get lost. Everyone say, get lost. Loud lay, get lost. Get lost. Alright? Don't first thing you do, oh, headache, take Panadol first. 
change your way of living change your way of understanding the spiritual thing the spiritual blessing has been given to you even command money to come to your account i'm doing that i'm seeing results i'm serious command the money to come to your account now the bible say give and it will be given to you press down shaken all right what else will man give unto you i'm not saying god is going to pour down money on you you know ringe like you know god doesn't print money in heaven all right will man give unto you people will give unto you command cause the right people to send the money to you you do the commanding all right you see everything has been done on the cross 2000 years ago your healing has been done all right if i say jesus is not going to he's not going to heal you now some of you may maybe start scolding me you know <laughs> you may not believe what i say Jesus is not healing you now. Jesus is not going to go heal you. You know why? Because he has healed you 2000 years ago. By his stripes you are healed. When you are healed 2000 years ago in the spiritual realm, that is the promise of God. You start believing for what he has done on the cross for you 2000 years ago, you are healed. Don't go on begging God, heal me, heal me. God, heal me, heal me, heal me. Give me, give me, give me. Give me. It was already done for you. By grace all has been provided for you. God has anticipated all your needs. All your needs he has anticipated before you even knew it. Before you even you knew your sickness have come, he has anticipated you're going to have this sickness, this is going to happen to you and he has provided a solution for you which is in Jesus Christ. Whatever lack you may have, whatever deliverance you may need, Whatever money you may need, God has already anticipated your problem. And the solution is done on the cross. That's why the Bible say in Corinthians, he was rich, Jesus, and he was made poor that you through his poverty will be rich. It is done already. So your prayer should be, Lord, thank you for, for what you have done for me. Thank you for your provision for me. Thank you for your, all, all, your, all your blessings for me, which was done through your son, Jesus Christ. Now I want to receive this. Say to your mountain, say to your sickness, be gone, be removed, be uprooted. Right? I can do the same for you. In fact, God is waiting for you to say it. God is waiting for you to say it. You have all the power within you, all right? He's waiting for you to say it. All you need to do is say and say and believe. Every time I have a pain on my knee here, I will say to the pain, pain, be gone. Be gone. Yeah. When I was in Mongolia, I felt hardly barely any pain on my left leg. I was surprised. I shouldn't be surprised. But I was surprised. You see, when you keep on saying, 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 pain, here, back pain, whatever pain, be gone. First thing to do is pain, be gone, all right? Be gone, be gone, get lost. When you have financial lack, rebuke the devil. Because the devil wants to attack the Christians, the Christian people. Number one, he wants to attack you with debt. He wants to attack you with lack. And you start believing in the word of God that you through his poverty, by his poverty, I have all that I need. I'm rich. Amen. Not rich on yourself, but rich through Jesus Christ. You want to be a blessing unto others? I'm sure you want to be a blessing unto others. The Bible says you will be blessed so that you will be a blessing unto others. It will come to pass. Say to your problems, don't talk to God about your problems. Talk to your problems about God. Problems, such and such an issue, be gone through the power that God has been given us. Amen. Next verse, last verse before we go. Behold, I give you power. Hallelujah. Power. Tread on serpents and scorpions these are the power of 
demonic forces, serpents and scorpions, all right? These are symbols of demonic forces, serpents. When you see a snake, you will frighten you, all right? Serpents speak of fear, fear. Whenever you have fear attack you, speak to your fear, be gone. Fear, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Scorpions. Scorpions also strike fear. They want to sting you. And over all the power of the enemy. Do you know in the New Testament, Jesus talks a lot about Satan? Do you know that? In the Old Testament, you barely can have 20 words about Satan. Even you have 20 words, 60 or 70 percent come in the book of, from the book of Job. Where else in the ministry of Christ, Jesus talks a lot about Satan. You have the power, you got to fight against your enemy, resist him, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Shall we all rise? Hallelujah. Everybody say, I have the power of God. I can fight against anything from the devil. All right? Hallelujah.